In lesson 10, we're going to be looking at how cross-sections and volume are related. So on page 273, you will see um, these two images. So go ahead and um, answer the questions on 273, then come back to the video. So number one said, how do the two coin stacks, um, how are they different from one another? So maybe you said something about, um, it just looks like one is leaning, so B is leaning. Do either um, of the stacks resemble geometric solids? If so, which one? Um, so both looks like they're both cylinders. So this first one um, is straight up and down versus this other one is sideways. So this first one is called a right cylinder. The second one is called an oblique cylinder when the center to center is perpendicular to the base that's a right cylinder so this like the pole connecting the center on top and bottom create a right angle um, and then if they don't create a right angle then that's considered oblique how do the heights relate here so the heights are the same because we used the same number of coins so when we stack up the coins the heights are going to be equal and same with the volumes. So the volumes would be the same since they're using the same number of coins. All right, then let's take a look. So take a look at these um, figures on the screen and sort them, okay? Which ones are right solids and which ones are oblique solids? Remember that right solids, okay, are the ones that are straight up and down like this and oblique are slanted. So go ahead and think about where you would sort these and then come back to the video. So this would be a right solid because it's straight up and down, straight up and down. This one is slanted, so that would be oblique. Slanted, so that one's oblique. This one's straight up and down. This one is slanted. So that's some examples of right solids versus oblique. Um, all right, then if we are thinking about a stack of note cards. So thinking about a stack of note cards, look at these four questions. I've got some pictures here to help you. So think about each of those four questions and then we'll discuss it. So what geometric solid does it look like a stack of note cards um, resembles? So it appears to be a rectangular prism. So rectangular because the base shape is a rectangle. And then prism because it just goes um, rec rectangular faces back to that congruent base in the back. So base shape being a rectangle. Um, what's the shape of any cross section? So each card would be like a cross section. Um, and each card is a rectangle as well. If the stack was shifted to create an oblique um, prism, so this one's kind of rotated, this one's more oblique, so turning um, and stacking sideways so that those sides are not perpendicular to the base. Um, does the base shape change? And the answer is no. Okay, the note cards are still the same rectangle, they're just pushed over a little bit. And that would mean that the cross sections don't change either. All right, then looking at page 274 in your workbook, um, you're going to be, so here's some things we know about the shapes on 274, is that they have congruent bases, okay? So these bases are congruent. Um, the base area is B squared unit, so we don't know the actual area, but we do know that they have the same area, so we're going to call it B squared or well, B um, units squared. So then B units squared for that base as well. The height is the same. Okay, so this height is the same. And this orange um, kind of box in here, this orange square in here is a cross section. Okay, and that's parallel, or this orange plane is giving you a cross section parallel to the base. 
So come up with one mathematical question that you think could be asked about the diagram and then come back to the video. So you could have come up with various questions, um, but maybe your questions were something about, um, are the volumes the same? Or are the cross sections the same? Does the cross section change for the oblique prism? Okay, so those are just some questions. You certainly could have come up with more. That's just a few examples of something you might have said. So let's take a look on page um, 274 at these um, prisms and go ahead and answer the questions in the book and then come back to the video. So if we were going to, um, oops, let's go back here. So if we were going to answer those questions in the book, so the first one said, um, what is, or sketch two cross sections. Okay, so for number one, you were just supposed to sketch two cross sections. And you can see the cross section here. So the sketch of it, and remember, it looks a little bit slanted, but the base shape is a square. So the, the cross section for each of these is a square. Okay, so for both prisms, it's a square. So even if we took a stack of note cards and slanted them a little bit, okay, the cross section stays the same. So we knew that these bases were identical, so their cross sections are going to continue to be identical. Um, and then number two said, how would the shape or area of the cross section changed if we moved that plane up or down? So if we could think of moving this plane up or down the prisms, how would that change? And if we continue to keep it parallel to the base, then it's not going to change. The cross section will be the same. Then number three, how do the volumes of the prisms compare? So the volumes are gonna be the same as well. Since we, just like those note cards, had the same, let me get some of this out of here had the same base area. So this, um, this base is identical in both shapes. Okay, it's the same shape going bottom to top. And they're the same height. So if you think of this as each of these cross sections as one note card, if you stack up 100 note cards here, it's going to be the same as if you stack it here. Okay, whether you stack them straight up or you stack them with a little bit of a tilt, same volume. So then if we're thinking about this, um, so again, we talked about those index cards again. The volume didn't change because it's still the same amount of materials. We didn't change the amount of materials, so the volume is not changing. So how could we say this in terms of, in, with our explanation in terms of cross sections? So if two shapes, so we could say something like if two solids, whoops, have the same um, base or cross section area, Okay, so if their cross section area is the same and they have the same height, the solids have the same volume. So if the cross sections are the same and the height is the same, then the volumes are going to be the same. And the cross section doesn't have to be the same, but the cross section area the same. So if we had a stack of circular cards and each card had the same area as the rectangle, how would the volume compare? So that's what, what we're saying here. If the cross area is the same, doesn't matter if they're different um, shapes, as long as that cross section area is the same, then the volume will be the same. 
well, the cross-section area and the height. All right, so get this written on your reference chart. So if two solids are cut um, into cross-sections by parallel planes to the base, and the cross-sections have equal areas, so these two blue pieces are equal areas, and they have the same height, then the volume will be the same. So if the cross-section area is the same and the height is the same, the volumes are the same. So then in this next activity, um, you're just going to determine on page 275 and 276 if each pair of shapes has the same volume. Um, and you can explain how you know. So if you don't need to calculate the entire volume, you don't need to. And thinking about what we just learned, that if the cross section or the base area is equal and the height is equal, then the volumes are going to be equal. So try to use that while you're thinking about whether the two have equal volumes. So if we look at this first one together, so the area of the base is 12 here. Okay, the area of the base here is a rectangle and 3 times 4 is 12. So this has a base area of 12. This has a base area of 12. Height of 6, height of 6. So these volumes are equal because the base area is the same and the height is the same. So even if we don't calculate it, we know that it's going to be the same. So go ahead, um, figure out for each of those next ones, two through six, whether you think they're the same or not, and explain your reasoning, then come back to the video. All right, so if we were to take a look at these, okay, this one's an oblique cylinder. Okay, so you've got the base area, which is a circle. So remember how you find the area of a circle is pi times the radius squared. So this is nine pi. And then the height is always perpendicular to the base. So the height here is the seven, not the 10. Okay, so this one has a height of seven. So if we take a look here, this one has a height of 10. So that's a different height. So let's look at the base area. So here it's pi times the radius squared again. So this one's nine pi, exact same base, but different heights. So these volumes are not going to be equal because the base areas are equal, but the heights are different. We can see the bases are the exact same here. We see it's a circle with this radius. So they're going to have the same area. So the bases are going to be equal even if we don't calculate it. And then we see the height here is the same. So these ones, the volume is going to be equal. Base area and height, exactly the same. These two, okay, now remember on this one, here's your base because this is the cross section that will stay identical in size, okay? So your base is this triangle. So base of, or area of a triangle is four times three. So base times height divided by two. So 12 divided by two is six, okay? Height here between the two bases is five. So when we look at this one, I'm gonna look at this as the height because on a rectangular prism, anything can be the base because all of them are rectangles. So then we'll look at this one as the base. Rectangle is base times height or length times width. So the base here is six. Okay, height is five. So these volumes are going to be equal. Okay, base here, five times five. So base is 25. Base here, again, five times five. So 25 for the base here. Height, five. Okay, going to a point, both going to a point. Okay, so volumes should be equal, we could think. Then this next one, the final one, we've got a cylinder and a cone. We see that the base is identical. So we see a circle with radius two. So we know that the base areas are equal. Okay, so the bases, bases are equal. We see that the heights are equal. However, this one's cross sections keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So this volume is getting smaller as we go up in height, and this one is staying the same. 
So these cross sections stay the same. So these volumes are not going to be equal. Um, so if we take a look at what we talked about in this lesson, so can we identify a right cylinder that would have the same volume as the one pictured? Okay, so you would need to draw a, something that had the same base area. Okay, so it could be a circle or it could be something else, but the base area here is pi times 10 squared. So your base would need to have a 100 pi area. So you could draw another circle with base or with radius 10, and then it would need to have a height of 25. So a right, oh, sorry, and this one said exactly a right cylinder. So we would just want the same base, and then we would want to have um, the height be 25 and just have it be straight up and down. Is there any measurement on the diagram that you would not use in calculating the volume? So area of the base times the height. So we don't need this 30 in calculating the volume. And then if we calculate this volume mentally, so not using a calculator, so just like I kind of did here with the base area of 100 pi. So volume equals area of the base times the height. So this is pi times 10 squared for the base area. So that's 100 pi. So mentally just means not using your calculator. So we would just not calculate in um, pi. And then the height here was 25. So 100 times 25 would give us 2,500 pi units cubed for that volume. All right, then on your reference chart, you can put this in as well, that the volume of a prism or a cylinder, okay? So whether it has a circular base or a different base, the volume is the area of the base times the height. And this is also for right or oblique. So the base can be any shape. And it can be slanted or it can be straight up. All right, then your lesson summary. So we looked at if we stack papers or note cards, it's going to make a rectangular prism. If it's straight up and down like this first picture, that's called a right prism because the sides make right angles. Okay, the base, the sides make right angles with the base. So then if the angle made with the base is not a right angle, then that's called an oblique prism. And their volumes don't change because the, the number of, when we looked at paper stacking, the number of papers stayed the same. So then we learned that there's this principle called Cavallari's principle that any two solids that are cut into cross sections by parallel planes and the corresponding cross sections have the same height and equal areas, then they're the same volume. So these have the same cross section, the size of that paper, the same height, so the volumes are the same. And that's for any shape, not just rectangles. Then we also looked at oblique um, cylinders versus right prisms, if they have the same base area, so this one's saying the base of this, the area of this circle is six, this one would be three times two, which is six, and then they have the same height, then those are gonna have the same volume as well. And same with pyramids, same base shape, same height, going to have the same volumes.